sometime. What time have in mind? Uh, first of all, the Second World War. I was supposed to go to Paris to study composition, to, to go on studying. And uh, after the war, there, was very, there were very difficult circumstances in which we, we lived materially as well. And uh, then the, this uh, period about uh, which we are uh, much talking, that means the, um, the period of, time of social yeah, realism, social and, realism cultural and, terror yes. and, terror. and I, <coughs> I couldn't say that it was totally uh, lost time for me, be, but uh, it was very uh, depressing time, and that was, of course, had a, a bad influence, a bad influence on mm. my work. Well, let us see what you said about your work 12 years ago. <laughs> Did anybody feel that it was impossible to work as a musician in Poland at that time? Or? Impossible? In what? Well, uh, as a composer, what? did they feel that mm. the official uh, no, I don't think so. formula no, of I don't think style so. made it difficult? One always, one always was, was able to compose, to compose for himself, you know, for oneself. Well, it's always the case. I think if it's uh, the uh, advantage of a composer upon the, the performer, <laughs> performers. <laughs> who must have the real life, you know, in order to exist, <laughs> and performances. While a composer can, can write and put here. Yeah. Well, talking about socialist realism and all the problems connected to the musical censorship or censorship in music, I wonder if, talking 12 years ago, you, were, you felt all free, or maybe there are some things that you can add talking now when we are living in, in a relatively free country. It's very difficult for the Westerners to understand. <laughs> what was it all about, censorship in music? Well, it all began with a big meeting where the man who was responsible for the cultural policy at that time, 1950, I think, no, 1949, uh, had a speech to all composers and musicologists uh, gathered, especially for that. He spoke for four and a half hours about uh, the ideology of art in communism. But how can you apply ideology to music? Well, how was it applied? That's always very mysterious. I can't recall what he was saying. Anyway, there was two notions that um, still are very mysterious to me. One is formalism and another is social, uh, socialist realism. I didn't understand well, uh, music neither of it. Could it be <laughs> realistic? But what was the practical implication of this theory? Well, I think that the main <coughs> main the thing was that uh, music should be accessible for simple people, for workers, for not initiated uh, but this audiences. Is such sounds rather innocent. In fact, how many managers of musical life now have the same concern? They want music to mm. be accessible. Well, it uh, went uh, much, much uh, farther away because uh, because there was a question of. Uh, even the means of expression, that means the, uh, the sound language of 19th century, the, that uh, was understandable for everybody, and uh, excluding all temptations of uh, avant-garde music and uh, more, um, more progressive. But in fact, it was this, this alarming paradox, that yes. this Marxism as a theory designing better future yes. was very very retrospective, very retrograde from the very beginning. It was always yes. anti-avangardistic, am I right? Yes, terribly. <laughs> yes, that was, of course, that was uh, a nonsense for all of us. Even the famous uh, teacher of piano, Professor Drzewiecki, told me after this gathering, he, he told me a very important sentence, very significant sentence he said so this is the end of polish music he said after the speech of the well of the man. he meant of course that the state has a total control 
yes. of all the critical monarch yes. holes, of all the radio programs. Not only. And all contacts with the West. Not only, but also all products of the composers as well. So there was no room to make music if state, yes. if the government was but against it. But it was an illusion, uh, illusion that uh, they were victims of, because uh, there was no possibility of preventing a composer from composing what he didn't, uh, what he really wanted. And this? that was my case. I thought that uh, since then I would write only, uh, I would mm, be performed only uh, partly, that means only my functional music, and all that I <coughs> wanted to really to compose would be in my drawer for the, for the whole, for to the end of my life. But did it slow down your musical development, the fact that you had no contact with the large audiences, that you didn't listen to your music? As I think that the factor that uh, was really important in this negative, uh, uh, negative, uh, from this negative point of view, was that it was terribly depressing, and a sort of, uh, a sort of breakdown, you know, that uh, was the consequence of uh, the state of affairs, was really ruining my, uh, my work as composer. You know, it, it was a sort of perfidy in, in, in their attitude, because I, as I said, I composed some functional music that I did with a certain pleasure, and I thought that it was useful. It was not mm, the result of a pressure, no. I, I wanted to, to compose something for schools, for children, for uh, small ensembles, for, um, in, in other words, music that was not uh, the part of my personal development, but just a service to some uh, needs, social needs. And uh, the perfidy of uh, those people was that <coughs> consisted of taking all that music and, and uh, giving me prizes for it, and considering that music as a result of their pressure, which was not true at all. And it's the sort of legend that I'm afraid is still present in some uh, commentaries, even now, because people imagine, you know, people, Western people imagine that there were some pressure on me, that I composed some uh, music, were using folk tunes as a raw material for me. Right. But it's absolutely not true. surrounded by people who were, well, I, your age is not a secret, you're no, 76, am I right? Yes. How do you feel this, surrounded with people who were, who were 10, 11? <laughs> or even less than that. Even less than, even that. Less than that. Do you regret that? No, I never youth? regret my, my child, child, uh, childhood or my youth. Or youth. No, no. It's a strange feeling that everything that happens is better. So with time, in my it is life. getting better and better yes. in my life. Yes, in my life. I'm very tempted when I see you surrounded by all these children <laughs> yes. to ask about the sheer joy of music making. Of the, music making. Does you think that in the past it was something evident oh, yeah. when we listen to Mozart? Oh, yes. And Excellent. what happened now? Why there is less joy in contemporary music? Or is there less, or is it coming back? What is your judgment? You see, the... 
it's a very sophisticated problem because in the 1950s, there was, uh, when speaking about the avant-garde of 1950s, the music undergone some development that was against the pleasure of music making a little because there was such so sophisticated tasks for musicians in their parts that um, sometimes the, the performer of an ensemble of an orchestra, for instance, was reduced to a sort of little part of the machine, but not a human being just enjoying playing his part. Of. So one of the reasons why I introduced the element of chance in my music was just this, to restore the pleasure of music making. So would you be scared to photograph their, their partition because I think they, 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 they expect this? Możecie dać teraz autografy. Chcecie autografy, to możecie pana yes. prosić. <laughs> Dobrze. Dobrze, poczekajcie. Każde dostanie. dostanie. Dobrze, no. Jak ma pani? Poczekaj, wszyscy dostaną. Poczekaj. Agnieszka. Małgosia. In spite of all this turbulent historical period you were living through, because the 80s were particularly di difficult, violent, full of contrasts and conflicts in our country, did it inspire That's you, true. did it help you, did it disturb you? You see, never my, ex my life experiences influence me directly. It never happens. I never compose under an impression of something that was experienced in in the life. Um, what influences, um, I think, every possible creative artist is the psychological condition, which is sometimes disturbed by the uh, life experiences. And there are some experiences that uh, help and uh, make the um, circumstances Prawda w odniesieniu do sztuki jest pojęciem wieloznacznym. W moim pojęciu bowiem talent nie jest wyłączną i prywatną własnością tego, który został nim obdarzony. Jest z pewnością darem, przywilejem, ale przywilej ten połączony jest z rozlicznymi obowiązkami. Well, you participated in this Congress, yes. in the quality of, of, of a great intellectual. This was a Congress of all top intellectuals of the country. I think we need some sort of explanation to the English language viewers, because intellectual on the continent of Europe, and in Poland in particular, has the, some, the, the very word has a different notion. I think it means something more for us, and it's a very positive notion, while, as far as I know, in England, this word is evoking sometimes some sort of suspicion. Yes. Well, I think that in Poland especially, uh, this word is very closely connected with the tendency and struggles of the nation to survive, to preserve the national identity. The most striking example is the 19th century, when, uh, <coughs> the, when Poland didn't exist as a state. It was occupied by three powers. And then great poets, great artists, contributed a lot uh, in this process of surviving of the national identity. But would you qualify your struggle for your own independence as something that will be an example of, of the ethical, of the moral mm. problems no, you were facing? <laughs> you, I don't think that I struggled <laughs> in my life. But you resisted at least, didn't you? Well, yes, certainly. It's a, it's a question rather of a cer certain psychological comfort. To Only be psychological, not ethical? <laughs> Ethical, certainly, but I mean the ethical uh, to be to be uh, to be in 
in order with 